This camera angle makes it feel like I'm getting my mug shot taken. Oh, oh, oh. Now something I've noticed about DIY and how-to channels is that they will tell you how to make a thing after you've cut wood, but they never teach you how to cut wood. And that is definitely a realization that I came to all of my own accord and definitely not because I stole the idea from someone in the comments section. Fuck you, I'll steal your comments for content if I want to, sue me. Cutting wood and becoming a DIY superstar is very easy. All you need are a few simple, cheap, easy to come by tools such as a jigsaw, circular saw, band saw, drop saw, CNC router, laser cutter, table saw, 3D printer, and a small knife to castrate whoever the fuck thinks those are regular household items. Hey, uh, come here. Just a, just a quick disclaimer. Don't castrate people because some idiot on the internet told you to. Oh, oh, oh. Now before you go cutting on wood, you need to know what wood is. Now wood can come in many forms. This is its raw form. It's not very useful unless you have a lathe. This is its processed form. It's very useful. Use this shit. This is wood that's been cut and laid upon itself a whole heap of different times. It's kind of useful. I mean, I can't find anything wrong with plywood. You can use it if you want. And this is what wood looks like if it's not wood and is in fact steel. Don't try to use the saws I show you today on steel. You'll fuck them. All right, now the part that people actually give a shit about. The two most common types of saw you will come across when working with wood are a wood saw, and a tenon saw. These are about all you need. Now these two saws are referred to as push saws, meaning they cut on the push stroke. Now pulling on these, you will still get a cut, but you'll get better results if you put all of your effort into the forward stroke, not the backward stroke. There are two other types of saws you may come across while woodworking, and one of those is the coping saw, and one is the hacksaw. The hacksaw is quite rare in woodworking. It's usually favored for cutting metals or plastics. Now the coping saw you will use if you're cutting things like curves or round shapes or anything along those lines. The tiny thin blade is very easy to manipulate while it's in the wood, and the high arched spine allows you to get around the piece you're working with. Very useful tool. More of an advanced one. Most hobbyists won't need it. Now the interesting thing about coping saws and hack saws is that the blade is interchangeable, which means it is also reversible. So this can cut either on the push stroke or the pull stroke, depending on your cutting style. And finally in the collection of hand saws that I have is the dovetail saw. This is known as a pull saw or a Japanese saw. That being, it cuts when you pull, not when you push. Again, if you push with it, it will cut but you'll get a far more effective cut if you pull. To be honest, these are my blades of preference because I put more emphasis on my pull stroke than my push stroke. But let's be honest, that's just because I've been single for so long. Yay, wanking jerk. And that's how you cut wood. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. No, that's not everything. There's a few more things you need to know, like namely, how to start your cut. When you're starting a cut, generally it's a good idea to pull back on the saw a couple times lightly, just so the teeth can knock out a nice little groove for you. But sometimes if you're working on harder materials, like hardwood, the saw can bounce around and you end up getting a very wide 
cut area. It's not always as simple as grab a saw and start hacking away. In some cases, yes it is, but in other cases you need to be a little bit more precise. Now one way to guarantee a good start to your cut is to cut or score the wood before you even get to using a saw. My preferred way is to take a square edge, line it up with the area you want to cut, take a knife or other blade and cut along the edge a couple of times. Leaves you with a nice little indent for your saw to fit into. If you take your saw at that point, fit it into the groove and give it a tug, it should start cutting nicely straight away. And you wind up with a nice square edge. Now believe it or not, saws are not the only way to cut wood on the cheap. You could take steps as simple as bashing something even slightly sharp into the wood and it will cut. And that's basically the fundamentals of a chisel. This is a beveled edged firmer. I really love saying that name. Beveled edged firmer. This one is about 15 years old. It's blunt as fuck and I will successfully cut this wood with it because cutting wood is easy. Seriously, all you need to cut wood with a chisel is obviously a chisel and something to wail on it with. Square yourself a line, line up your chisel with the bevel facing out, and smack it. And now that that cut's established, wood cuts. And that's how you cut wood with basically every tool that costs less than $20. Obviously there are more ways to cut wood, but generally if you go further than what I've just covered, you're straying into the territory of power tools. And let's be honest, they are their own video. And now hopefully after watching this, you're able to cut wood with a saw, you're able to cut wood with a chisel, you're able to know that you should cut the testicles off of any idiot that thinks a 3D printer is something that every cunt and their dog has. And you're well on your way to starting your own DIY adventure. Like seriously, and I can't stress this enough, can you please not cut people's testicles off because someone on the internet told you to? Well, anyway, like and subscribe while you're doing what I tell you to, to be honest. Leave a comment.